Judging is not a game. It's not supposed to be a game. But sadly, over recent years, more and more Chief Justice Roberts has been playing games with the court to achieve the policy outcomes he desires. That's my next guest, Senator Ted Cruz, today railing against the Supreme Court. Chief Justice John Roberts' decision to block the Trump administration from rescinding DACA, which was Obama's blatantly unconstitutional executive order that unilaterally changed immigration law. Siding with liberal justices, Roberts ruled, wrote the opinion that while Trump had the authority to axe DACA, he didn't give a reasoned explanation for its action and failed to consider the hardship to DACA recipients. Sadly, this wasn't the only troubling decision by a Republican appointed justice. Earlier this week, Justice Neil Gorsuch joined liberals in a decision that expanded federal anti-discrimination law to cover LGBTQ employees. Now, regardless of what you think of that policy outcome, this wasn't the court's decision to make. And it once again shows that religious conservatives who stand up for GOP judicial nominees are always left holding the bag. Senator Cruz joins me now. Senator, does this represent the death of the conservative legal movement or is that going too far? Because there are a lot of people really depressed out there tonight. This was a disastrous week at the court. Uh, John Roberts's decision, in both cases, John Roberts was on the wrong side. Uh, the decision today on DACA, on Obama's executive amnesty, as you noted, Roberts wrote the opinion, and it was John Roberts and the four liberals. And, and the opinion is, is it, it, it's a joke. It, 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 is, it, it is, he's playing games because, as you noted, not a single justice, none of the nine disputed that what Obama did was illegal, it was contrary to federal immigration law, and they all agreed that Trump has the authority to reverse it. And nevertheless, what they held today is that Trump is prevented from stopping breaking the law. That because Obama broke the law, and, and, and the game Roberts pay, played is he said, well, yes, yes, of course Trump has the authority to stop breaking the law, but he didn't explain it well enough. And, and it's exactly the same thing. A year ago, Roberts did the same thing, joining with the four liberals in a case striking down the census where the Trump administration wanted to ask as part of the census the question, are you a U.S. citizen? Now, we've asked a version of that question in just about every census since 1820, literally for 200 years. Roberts played the same game. He said, well, of course you've got the authority to do this, but the Commerce Department didn't explain their reasons well enough, so we're striking it down. And, mm -hmm. and what he knew perfectly well is there wasn't time en enough to do it again, so he ended up getting rid of the policy he didn't like. What this decision today is about is about five justices who want amnesty to continue, and, and they're hoping that the result in November will be a, a Democratic president that will ignore the law and continue amnesty. This, this was a shameful decision today. And, and the, the Title VII decision you referenced was, was every bit as lawless. This is two in a row that have been really contrary to the oaths the justices take. Uh, and for people to understand this, the court does not make law, at least it's not supposed to. Yeah. That's supposed to be left to the legislative branch. That's why we have separation of powers. That's why we have three different branches of the government. But that's not how it works now. This is the chief justice of the Supreme Court. So, Senator, once you're chief justice, does the president have the authority to make someone else chief justice of the court? Not that it would change the outcome of these cases, but is there any benefit to that? Could it happen? So the, so the president doesn't have the authority. The only way that, that a Supreme Court justice can be removed is for that justice either to voluntarily resign or to be impeached and removed from office by the House and the Senate. But but the president, so the chief justice is a separate position from the other eight associate justices. Yeah, that's justices. what I'm talking about. Yeah, that's I'm not I'm not saying obviously he can't be taken off the court, but the title of chief justice does that have? No, that can't be changed. It, 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 it is a separate seat, so it can't. The, the president can't do anything unless and uh. until John Roberts is impeached or resigns, he's there as long as he wants. I mean, remember Earl Warren, uh, you know, back when, when Nixon was running for president, impeach Earl Warren was a bumper sticker. Now, of course, a Republican, Dwight Eisenhower, put Earl Warren on the court, and Republicans keep getting 
Supreme Court justices wrong over and over and over again. You look at John Roberts. When George W. Bush put John Roberts as chief, in the other room was my old boss, Mike Ludig. Ludig, I'm absolutely certain oh, if he had been, been on the court, Obamacare would have been struck down. These decisions would have gone the other way. And I'll tell you, look, Neil Gorsuch wrote the opinion, the Title VII opinion on, on sexual orientation and gender identity that's utterly lawless. I can tell you I urge the president emphatically to appoint Mike Lee for that vacancy. I, I am certain if Mike Lee had been there, he would have followed the law and we would have seen different results in these cases. Well, it seems like we always seem to screw up the appointment process. I mean, my old boss, Clarence Thomas, phenomenal. That was back in 1990. Look at what they put him through. Uh, by the way, his yep. dissent was fun just off the charts. He said today's decision must be recognized for what it is, an effort to avoid a politically controversial but legally correct decision. It's given the green light for future politi political battles to be fought in this court rather than where they rightfully belong, the political branches. Such timidity forsakes the court's duty to apply the law according to neutral principles and the ripple effects of the majority's error will be felt throughout our system of self-government. Uh, they're surrendering their power. The law, liberal lawmakers cheering this, Senator Cruz, are just saying, look, we don't have to be held accountable for these for votes. You take it away. No, that, that's exactly right. You know, I, I'm right now writing a book that's coming out this fall called One Vote Away, and it's focused on the Supreme Court, how on issue after issue, they're 5-4. The decision today was 5-4 one way or the other. And, and one of the things it traces is the history of Republican nominations. You know, Democrats, they bat almost a thousand. Almost every single one of their nominees votes exactly as they want on every single close contested case. Republicans at best bat 500. Many of the worst Pathetic. judicial activists have been Republican nominees. And there's a pattern. You look at those who've been faithful to, the, to, the, to their oath and their constitution. Your former boss, Clarence Thomas, my former boss, William Rehnquist, Antonin Scalia, Sam Alito, every one of them had a long proven record of being faithful to the Constitution, and they had been pounded. They paid the price. And, and, and too many Republican nominations, they're afraid to nominate a strong conservative. And we see the results with what happened this week. Yeah. Senator Cruz, uh, your speech was amazing. Thank you so much for explaining this to the audience.